Welcome to the newest episode of Beyond the Fame with Jason Fraley. I'm your host, Jason Fraley, picking the brains of the top filmmakers, musicians, and artists of our time. Brett Michaels of Poison rocks Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races in West Virginia on Saturday night. We spoke about his biggest hits from Talk Dirty to Me to Nothing But a Good Time to Every Rose Has Its Thorn, as well as his recent success on reality TV. Hello, it's Brett. Brett Michaels. Hey, thanks so much for joining us on WTOP in Washington, D.C. You know it. How are you? Thank you for having me on. How are you doing today? doing good man uh we we're we're promoting your show coming up here on saturday october 1st at the hollywood casino at charlestown races in west virginia which is uh, it's a little bit outside of dc but it's all in our listening uh area man we're gonna we're gonna plug this and get some folks to come out to see you uh, but before before we talk that show um i know you were just in the nation's capital over the summer at your stadium tour down, down at nats park in june that was before the nats traded juan soda <laughs> but uh how how <laughs> How how was how was the big stadium tour here in and Nats Park? Any any good fun at Nats Park? Oh, Nats Park was incredible. Let me say this. First of all, after the last two and a half years, I said I walked on that stage. I said, I've been waiting for this party nearly two and a half years. It is gonna be great. And remember, I grew up uh, my father is was in the military, and I grew up, spent so much time down in that area and uh, as a as a baseball fanatic, it was a great day for me. You know what I mean? And so coming down there, I brought uh, not only the buses, but my personal family uh, and, and just drove right in there. And we it was a great party and a big storm hit. It didn't stop anybody. Everyone was down there having a great time. And uh, it was just a, a great night in my life. And that's the same thing we're doing uh, when we come see you, it's going to be an incredible, incredible show on Saturday. That show is going to be slam packed, sold out, and just a just a good party. Absolutely, absolutely. And then, um, is it what's what's is this tour called? Um, party Grawl? Is that what we're calling it? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's the Mardi Gras Party Grawl. It's uh, it's the way we've done it. You know, the the one before this was nothing but a good vibe, and that's what we bring with the Brett Michaels Band. I mean, again, all the poison hits. Just give them a twist to each of the songs. Um, and the solo band's incredible. They're all from Manassas, Virginia. So it's, uh, you know, they're my friends growing up. And it is just, a, it's a good vibe. It's like going to Mardi Gras. I, I, I host that uh, almost semi-annually. Go down there and, and uh, we throw a big party. And I'm taking that same attitude. Everyone comes in and just making the fans know they're appreciated and the beads and the, it, you know, we put beads on the neck and you get guitar picks and bandanas and we just make a, it's, it's meant to be a, a night of celebration of music and fans. I love it. Guitar picks, bandanas and, uh, and beads. It's going to be great. And, and I like, the, you get the works. You get the words. <laughs> uh, definitely a rock show. And I love that you said that there, you know, a lot of a lot of the band for this. So this show, this tour is going to be uh, uh, local people, Virginia folks. So that's like a homecoming for them. That's cool. Um, yeah. And that's who's been with me forever. I'm a I'm a I'm a loyal guy. These guys are such great musicians, uh, men and women in the band. I mean, just incredible, you know, just incredible musicians, but a lot of fun. They get it. And it's kind of like a rock and roll meets Kenny Chesney meets Jimmy Buffett meets, uh, you know, the poison uh, cryo and pyro. So it's a you get the whole works. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Everyone you mentioned, I've been to many great outdoor Kenny shows and people love the Jimmy Buffett. Add some Brett Michaels. Come on. It's the, the fun's going to be flowing. All right. So uh, so a lot of the band play grew up in, in Virginia, but where you remind us where you grew up. I was like north of Pittsburgh somewhere up there, right? Yeah, I grew up in Butler, Pennsylvania, and my dad and mom, uh, my dad was working for uh, as a Navy veteran and then worked for Armco Steel, uh, you know, to supplement income and do stuff. And we we uh, moved around a bit uh, down into Virginia for a bit and then into, into Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, to be exact, uh, to the Inland Naval Support Depot there where he finished out his career. And my mom worked at White Hill Correctional Institute which uh, fortunately I was just able to visit, never spend any time there, if you know what I mean. So it was a good, uh, a good, you know, just hardworking family, good, great mom and dad, my sisters, Michelle and Nicole. And we just, I grew up in that central Pennsylvania area and either, you know, if I was heading down your direction, shoot down 15 or uh, eventually uh, depending on rush hour traffic, <laughs> which way to get into the city. 
<laughs> that's right yeah i mean mechanicsburg's right there between i guess not quite to harrisburg but like just past what yep. dillsburg boiling springs i love it up it's beautiful up there uh well remind it us how, remind us how the actual how you how you how the band came together then how does beautiful mechanicsburg pennsylvania spawn this glam metal badass poison band <laughs> how'd you meet the guys in form so here here are a couple things so uh meeting you know again first person i met i worked as a um, I was a busboy and a fry cook. So I met our original bass player, right? His name was Dave. And he introduced me to Ricky. And just like all bands, you know, that worked for a little bit playing clubs. And then just me and Ricky stuck together as friends. And the next thing you know, we met Bobby. He was great. And he was committed. I said, I, this isn't just something to do for the weekends for me. I really want to write original music. And so we would have to go to the clubs and play covers you know you play a couple nights of cover and then we'd say look we want one original set and the only place to really take that at that time before the internet was to go to new york or los angeles at that moment and uh we decided if we were going to starve uh and and have no place to live let's at least play pick a little bit warmer territory and uh so we went out to la and made our uh what was a blessing uh met cc out there and uh and the next thing you know uh we made our own record and kept our publishing and that ended up being a a really good uh, that ended up being a really good day in our life you know what i mean we just wrote all these songs and got to keep the publishing and and was our own record label uh so we just played club by club and built it up until eventually here we are you know, a, a long way into our career playing at the stadium and, and three generations of incredible fans. Oh, yeah, I love it. And I know there's generations of fans. Our listeners um, are going to know so many of the songs that now I, I would love to just uh, if, if you have a second, go and go into a couple of the, the big ones or any memories of recording those specific songs. So I know that first album had Talk Dirty to me. Um, do you remember, you know, being in the studio when you're cutting that? I know you were a co-writer on that, but any good memories you can share of, of recording that one? Of course, yes. So all of us, you know, again, we all write the music together in the poison. No matter who wrote it, who had the main thing, we decided, look, so there's no division. Let's just split the song four ways. And obviously solo, that's different. But when we did that song, we recorded it exactly how you hear it now. But we got in the studio with a producer and this story has become infamous because we got in there and uh, uh, let's just say... He wanted, he had this idea he was going to change everything, slow the song down into this really, ba -da 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 -ba -da. I was like, we're not doing any of that. I like, <laughs> if I'm going to make it in rock and roll and live outside the box, you got to live and stick to your guns by what you created. And so we ended up doing this whole record with what was then the engineer from Rat. The, the Rat record was hitting big. And he, Jim Faraci was great. He goes, guys, just be you. I'll record it, go in sing play raw music and that attitude is i think what got such great reviews on the stadium tour today we just went out there and just gave it a thousand percent raw music but talk dirty to me had we listened to other people would have been uh, a complete disaster we just stuck to our guns and played it raw like it sounds now I love that you stuck to your guns. Thank you for sticking to your guns because we everyone loves that song. Um, and I know your next album, Open Up and Say Ah, was was even arguably even bigger. Um, tell me about um, Nothing But a Good Time. I mean, that is just, I mean, even when you play stadiums today, uh, that, that has to be just like the ultimate party anthem, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And we thank you. We end with that song and it's bow, bow, down. And now we have this kick going underneath it, just a steady kick drum. It's just, it just kicks ass. It's a great time. And people, you know, when they come to a concert and if you give them a great experience, everyone's singing at the top of their lungs, having a, it's a good party song. And that's what it's meant to be. But what it's structured, if you really listen to the verses, I wrote it about having a not great boss. Um, you know, and here I am, a young musician, constantly being screamed at as a busboy and fry cook. I mean, old school yelled at. And I thought, <laughs> man, I'm working hard doing my job. And so when I had a chance, if you listen to those lyrics, it's about all of us working hard and 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 not being feeling appreciated. So I was always looking for nothing but a good time when I went to the shows. 
and got to play music and from you name it from hammerjacks to the bayou to you know all those places we delivered that that was my sort of moment of finding that music therapy of just letting loose and having a great time Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it's, it's a, it's an all timer. Um, and yeah, and, and there's so many we could go into your mama don't dance a great logins. We've seen a cover, but, there, but, but my listeners will kill me if I don't at least ask you at least one question about every rose has its thorn. So, you know, nothing but a good time is such a fun party song, but every rose has its thorn. It showed a different side that you guys could do this, this really moody ballad. Um, so talk about how that sort of showed that, that there was a little depth to poison and dare say, maybe now your most iconic song <laughs> yeah and and here's what it is you know when you're writing a song the, the truth the, the real truth is you don't you don't sit down as a group and go this will show this level of depth or this will what you do is you write music i you know like i said i write all these songs and every rose i had a broken heart i i was you know young young love and she was great i was great but i had no money and she was in los angeles i was you know in the back of a uh, loading up a van and a winnebago a mi- not even a win a mini winnie Right. Mm -hmm. And traveling the country and it just it that that fell apart, you know, and and so but to me, it was heartbreaking. And I wrote that song and it's when, you know, the first album had I Won't Forget You, which had that Americana feel to it. And then this one just which did really well. But then every rose just people related to it. And even to this day, it's people just relate to the lyrics and the song that that is truly life there's highs and lows and you find that balance in between and then all of a sudden something to believe in you know i wrote that when my best friend passed away and just you know i just raw emotion and i think people realize the craziest thing i will tell you the toughest songs to write you ready for this the toughest songs to write are party songs because you're partying you're having a great time you don't want to write a song you're like i'm having a great time it's more painful but much easier to write a, a a song that is bittersweet a ballad or something that's painful is much more direct so you have this exact feeling and you write that and you know exactly marrying the chords what works what sets the mood and and luckily fans related Awesome. Yeah, it's it's an all timer. We can't wait to to see it at your show. Um, I know we're up against the clock. So I guess before we run, talk about how a whole new generation, uh, you know, discovered you um, sort of as this pop culture figure on stuff like, you know, uh, Rock of Love reality show. And you recently did what did you do? You did uh, Guy Fieri's um, Ultimate Game Night on Food Network Discovery Plus. Talk about how. So, I mean, there was Celebrity Apprentice, too. You won the friggin thing um, before we even knew. I'm not even going going there that's a controversial political thing now but just in general um you know re- how reality television introduced you you and your music to a whole new era of, of of fans absolutely so here's what it is if you truly you know my whole attitude is bet on yourself that that's the only way you can truly win you got to believe in what you're doing before anyone else will and tv opened up i started with you know stuff like nashville star You know, that was, I I went down and was a judge. I like, I love country music. You know what I'm saying? I've been out with, you know, you can look it up. You see me and Kenny Chesney doing every rose at the stadium. You see me and Jimmy Buffett, you know, McGraw, everybody. So my point to that is I'm like, I I have a ranch in Nashville. Let's, let's go down and do Nashville star with Leanne Rimes. That was a great intro into TV. And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, we're doing uh, Rock My RV. I'm showing people I build out these RVs. People can check that out at official Brett Michaels TikTok. I'm not making this up. It's They'll really get a good laugh out of that if they need a laugh. And But then all of a sudden, it was Rock of Love. And I said, look, uh, you know, uh, um, it, let's go in. Let's have a lot of fun. But just don't script it. I'm not an actor. I, I can do reality. And it ended up becoming bigger than network TV. It was, we could have probably done 50 episodes, you know, 50 shows of it. But after about three seasons, we, I thought we're at the very top. Let's just, we'll, we'll move on. And we went from there and, and me and Guy Fieri, uh, you know, did a couple great shows together. And with, I have two daughters now, 22 and 17. And, you know, just have some, they come on the shows with me and we have a great time. 
awesome. It's it's been it's been quite the career you you've done and seen it all. It, it's really incredible. Um, so but we're glad to see that you're you're keeping it going here. And uh, everyone, uh, come check out Brett Michaels. He's going to be at the Hollywood Casino um, at Charlestown Races on October first. Uh, thanks so much for doing this. It was a blast catching up with you. Hey, thank you for doing it. And I just want to say to you, to the fans, again, my sincere gratitude. Uh, you know, I have this thing called Welcome to the Fam. It just says fan appreciation matters. That's it. It's And I, I'm a fan of music. So I treat everyone great. It's a good party. We play all the poison hits. We just give them a twist. But when I say this, it's relevant. We keep our show in the here and the now and just bring the hits forward. But it's a... It is just a good party, and I thank you. I can't, like I said, we're all in it together, and uh, it, it's it's the the Brett Michaels show is going to be an incredible night. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing this. We'll 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 see you at the show. We can't wait. I can't wait. Thank you for having me on, my friend. Thanks so much for listening to Beyond the Fame with Jason Fraley. Our theme music is Scott Buckley's Clarion. Remember to give us a five star rating if you like what you hear. We'll see you next time. I wanted to take a second to tell you about an app I really enjoy. Living in the D.C. area is great, and Podcast D.C. gathers all of the local shows that I like all in one local app. Health, sports, local news, politics, and so much more. Podcast D.C. is the new local app with hundreds of D.C. area podcasts to choose from. I can earn exciting rewards just for listening and share the podcasts I love instantly. Available in the App Store or in Google Play, listen local with Podcast D.C.